Russell Mintz. Muscle Mintz is the creator of Carnival Pure Beef Protein Icing. Beef built muscle and Carnivore is the world's number one selling beef protein. Hey everybody, welcome to episode one of a brand new show, Fac Attack, starring Fakri Mubarak. Fakri turned pro back in 2005 at the USA Championships, along with some guy named Phil Heath, most of you probably never heard of. And he went on to more renown as a contest prep coach, has worked with some phenomenal athletes. First of all, welcome, Factory. And can you give people a little, just a little taste of some of the people, some of the names they might remember that you worked with? Wow, yeah. So thank you very much, Ron. I mean, it's, it's uh, muscular development gave me my first opportunity uh, right after I turned pro, right? I mean, yeah. Steve Blackton grabbed me backstage before finals. <laughs> yeah, he does that. It was him and Flex Wheeler at the time. They were like, you're signing with muscular development. I was like, all right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, I mean, I competed a couple of times. Um <clears throat> Uh, my main focus was, you know, I guess business, right? And and I developed a I developed a really good um, prep business, fine business. Um, you know, I, I I say I'm the father of online coaching. You know, uh, some people don't like to hear that, but if if you really think about it, you know, at that time you had Hani, you know, you had Chad, of course, you had George that was just starting out. You had you know you had Neil, Chris Cito, of course, but none of them were really doing it like online like I was. Right. Um, and, and, you, and, it, and it's funny, Ron, because if you really think about it, you know, those guys are still pretty much the Mount Rushmore yeah. of coaching, right? Yeah. And you're talking about 2005, and those guys are still in the Mount Rushmore of coaching. Yeah. yeah. It's a long time ago. I mean, there's, there's a lot of good coaches nowadays. Um, you know, we, we could go over them eventually throughout the shows, you know. So I started coaching people um, in 2008. But you have to remember, right? So I started training in 1990, right? Yeah. Um, so... Around like 1994, something called AOL <laughs> opened up. So we had AOL chat rooms. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I was I was coaching people and telling people what to do in AOL <laughs> chat rooms around like 1994. Wow. You know, so it's pretty crazy if you think about it, man. Um, You've so got yeah, mail. Man, training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm old. Man. I'm old. Man. <laughs> so, uh, so, so a couple of names I've I've, uh, I've helped turn pro. Um, I have 115 pro cards. Wow. Um, um, yeah, I have 115 pro cards. I have 22 IFB pro wins. Um, man, I, I pro, and, and I'll give you numbers because we treat we treat this like a business, right? Yeah. So we have we have QuickBooks. You know, we have we have you know we this is a business. This is a business. You know, a lot of money has been flowing through this business. A lot of people have been flowing through the business. Um, we have over 3,000 NPC wins. Wow. You know, class wins and overall wins. Um, some of my biggest pros, Justin Compton. Oh yeah. You know, I helped him start a pro. Yeah, Justin Compton. That that year actually I had top four in the heavyweight class that year. So it was Justin Compton, Lloyd Daniels, um, Rob, um, Rob Jules, uh, yeah. who else? Uh Marco Rivera. Um man, there's so many of them. <laughs> I would have to go down this. Vaughn Anthony, one is from Brooklyn, New York. He turned pro, he won his first two pro shows. Um, man, uh, okay. I, I I gotta yeah I gotta like get, pop up the list, man. I know I, I I hit you with that out of left field, so my apologies. <laughs> uh, another interesting fact I I seem to remember about you is you're half Egyptian, half Cuban. Is that right? Yeah. So my father's Arabic. My father's actually from Palestine. So my father's Arabic, and then my mother's Cuban. I was raised. Uh, I, I consider myself more Latino. Yeah. You know, because I was raised by my mother and my great aunts. You know, my parents separated when I was young. Yeah. Um, I just actually reunited with my fa father's side of the family in 2008 and 2000, late 2017. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. the shortest one, by the way, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's get into it, man, because uh, episode one, you picked the topic and it's a great topic, especially now we're still in contest season. It seems like contest season goes on all year now. It used to be, now, kind yeah. of, uh, used to be like a seasonal thing. Spring yeah. to the early fall. After November was pretty much dead, right? After national was pretty much dead, but now it's like all year long. Yeah, well, I mean, now they got the Olympia happening in December sometimes, yeah. so it, it's yeah. throwing things for a loop. So, contest prep cycles. This is where a lot of people make or break their prep because some of them make poor decisions. They just don't know any better. You know, I would put myself back when I competed in that category. I never had a coach. I don't think it would have made a tremendous difference. I wasn't meant to be like a some awesome pro or anything, but I think I made a lot of stupid mistakes just out of ignorance. 
And, you know, there's a lot of people out there, even though there's access to information, plenty of free information online, that's also a problem because there's too much information. People don't know what to trust, what's right, what's wrong. So that's why we have you here, someone who knows his shit, someone who has turned a ton of people pro, has helped a ton of people win shows. So where do we begin? When you're putting together a, a contest prep cycle, and we're talking about PEDs here, what are the basic things people need to start thinking about before they before they even start their prep? So what I what I mean, best case scenario, what I like to do is I like to have the client a couple of months before the prep, right? Because then we could we could see what works with them, not just PD wise, but just also also diet wise, training wise, and stuff like that. So best case scenario is always good to have them like three months before the show. You know, um, I have clients, man. I have, I have, I have clients that I've literally had like for the last seven, eight years that are still with me. Hmm. You know, so and and I've had clients for you know for many years at a time too as well. I mean, this you know still to this day, like I said. Um, so best case scenario would be a couple months out. So we would do, uh, you know, we would do a good test. So test the base, right? Test yeah. is always like the base of everything. Um, and if people say, well, there's not, well, well, everything is DHT based, right? So it's the DHT based test, you know? So um, we will start with tests, you know, depending, depending on their, depending on their, on their, uh, on their experience. So um, Ron, you think it's okay if I go to my USA prep? Why not? It was you, you're talking about where you did yourself, but we're, we're okay, talking so, about this was 17 years ago, but I'm sure it all still, I don't think a whole yeah, lot's I changed. Mean, so that, okay, so for, let's take let's take that for example. So when people talk about evolution, right? Yeah. The last PD was when, like 1960s. You know. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's there's been designer <laughs> yep. stuff, but I mean, the basics yeah. have been around a very long time. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, GH was got big in in the 90s. Insulin got big in the 90s. But you're talking about PEDs. You're talking about like Anadrill was one of the last ones in the 60s. Or Tyrannoball, you know, when 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 Eastern Eastern Germany fell. But for the most part, PD's been around for a long time. Um. So. To give you an example of, uh, I don't want to give anybody else's example. I'm gonna, I would like to give mine. So for the USA's, I was five years into into competition, right? So I started tra weight training in 1990. I was natural all the way up to June 2000. Hold on, Ryan. Let me just open the door for the dog. Yeah, yeah. Good dog owner. Make sure my dog is inside. <laughs> Yeah, he, 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 I have one who's a pain in the ass, by the way. <laughs> so 10 years um, drugs, 10 years natural training. Yeah, 10 years natural training. Um, I, I, I pretty much maximized my training. Um, if I put up pictures before. I have a picture against my uh, 300, my, my 1998 300M, <laughs> <laughs> Priceless M when I got it. Uh, you know, I was ripped. I was, I was shredded at, at 200. I mean, I was shredded at about 194, 95 pounds. Hmm, and that's wow. pretty big for somebody being natural and being shredded. Yeah. Um, the reason why I had so much mass was because I trained fucking hard, man. Mm. I always trained hard. I mean, I, from the, from the minute I started training, it was like high intensity, heavy duty, Mike Menzer, you know, uh, Casey by you know, type of training, man. It was just, it was just there during the eighth course, you know? Um, so I always focus on heavy weight. So throughout the 10 year period, I was competing in powerlifting. I was a very good powerlifting, natural powerlifting, ADFPA. Um, I also did the USAPL, um, finished second in the world in USPL and then ADFPA. I have a bunch of titles from them too. So my total at 90 kilos at 198 pounds was a, was a little bit above 1700, hmm. you know, and, and that was as a junior, which is 20 to 23 years old. Wow. You know, so yeah, so I, I built my foundation. So I was pretty, I was pretty thick, you know, by the time I started, you know, PDs in, in June of 2000. Yeah. Um, so I did the I did the Atlantic I, no I did the Eastern USA. Um, I won the overall novice, and at that time you had like I had forty seven people in my novice class. Good old days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good days. Remember those days, bro? <laughs> I do. I used to. Those shows went on forever, and that was just bodybuilding. I know that was just bodybuilding, right? Yeah. So I finished. Uh, I finished third in the opening that show. Ron Brown beat me. You remember Ron Brown? Yeah. Um, a kid from uh, he finished fifth at the nationals that year, by the way. Uh, in 2020, um, a kid from Staten Island beat me. I forgot his name. He's, he was, he's not a kid because he was a little bit older than I was. Um, he went out to the universe, I think. He went out to finish like top five in the universe. Hmm. So I lost to two very good athletes in my first show. Um, my second show in Atlantic States was 2002. Man, the minute I woke up, I was like, I told my wife, I said, call everybody. 
And she was like, what? I said, fucking call everybody. Like, <laughs> nobody sucks me at this show, man. Oh, man. You know? So I, Ron, I can see my heartbeat. <laughs> I had no skin, you know what I'm saying? That's awesome. But I was 2002. 2003, I finished fourth in Nationals. It was my fault. I went up against some, some pretty good guys. Um, Chris Drim won the class that year. Oh, yeah. You know, I think it was like his 11th or 12th time um, competing at, at the national level. Um, Rock Shabazz, you know, yeah. he beat me to second. Um, and, and Curtis Bryant. So wow. all, all three of those guys, yeah, those schools are so three good body and three thick round bodybuilders too. Yeah. You know, for my third year training. Um, so I finished fourth and then USA's I finished first. I got perfect scores in a light heavyweight class. And then like you said, I looked to some guy named Phil Heath. You know? <laughs> he was he's a, he was okay. Yeah, he was okay. He was all right. I don't know, only seven times in Philippia. Um. You know, so the reason why I'm going back in these on, on, on these contests um is because so from 2000 to 2005, I really never increased my dosages, right? Mm. Because I was still growing. So the whole point is why maximize something if you're still growing? And that's the problem everybody has, right? Mm. So they'll do a show and it's the first time on PDs, or there's two shows and then two times on PDs and whatever, a couple of years. So they're like, oh shit. So if I do, if I do 500, you know, this show, next show I gotta do 750. And yeah. that's I got to do a thousand. You know what I mean? It's that's automatically thinking, right? Right. And I would say this. The problem with bodybuilding is that, you know, so I own 320 pairs of Jordans, right? <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a Jordan collection. I'm, I'm actually going to start selling them because I'm getting old. Like, like, I don't even wear them, right? So like, let me just get rid of them for money. Yeah. So all those Jordans, but I can't dunk like Michael Jordan. <laughs> that's right. I can't play basketball like Michael Jordan, right? Yeah. But the problem in this sport, Ron, as you know, is, you know, if, if, if Ronnie Coleman is taking a bottle of this, right? He's saying he's taking a bottle of this. So let me try to take a bottle of this. So if I'm not growing out of this, that means I got to take two bottles. Then I got to take three bottles. Then I got to take four bottles. And the problem is that PD is, PDs are not fucking candy, bro. Like, mm. those are art medications that are meant for medical purposes, you know, and you're taking them and, you know, I guess we'll talk about it in you know, another podcast, but... You, know, you got to be careful what you're taking. So the more you increase, the more, you know, the more problems you're going to have. It's not a matter of if or not. It's a matter of you are going to have, you know, so it, it could be your kidneys, which, we, you know, I, I've been on here before discussing my kidney issues with you. Um, it could be your heart. It could be, it could be, it could be a bunch of stuff, man. And, and eventually, you know, that shit catches up to you. So. So let's say, so in 2000, my first show, I started, so, <laughs> so in June of 2000, my first show, I was 197 pounds in June, yeah. right? And I had to compete in November. So the day after the Atlantic States of 2000, I went and I bought a whole bunch of shit. I bought like $7,000 full of stuff, <laughs> HGH, everything, right? I started taking stuff and, and lo and behold, by that, by, by that August, like two months later, I was like 221 pounds. Nice. You know, so I, yeah, I blew up. So it was like, oh shit, so what am I going to do? You know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a heavyweight, but I, I don't look like a heavyweight, you know, because I just started taking stuff. So I had, I had to cut back down. So my first cycle was 500 milligrams of test, um, 400 milligrams of EQ, and uh 500 milligrams test, 400 milligrams of Q, 300 milligrams of trend, and I was taking an Arimidex every other day, right? Okay. Yep. So that was the first half. That was that was at 15 weeks out. And then at 12 weeks out, I added uh no, I'm sorry, that was at 15 weeks out. So I carried that until 10 weeks out, put on a whole bunch of size, and then at 10 weeks out, we added Masterone 300 megs, um, Primo 300 megs. And an oral tyrannable. So okay. we kept that in. Um, so now we have now we have the 15 weeks out and the 10 weeks out combined. We wow. ran all that, yeah, ran all that combined until um six weeks out. At six weeks out, I started putting in the hardeners, right? We started putting in the, the, the hollow testins, um at 30 megs, um, the provivins at 50 megs. Um, and I started putting in the Arimidex at that time. It was only Arimidex. We started putting in Arimidex, um, every single day, you know, so that, that was a six weeks out. So we carry now, now we're carrying the 15 weeks, 10 weeks and a six weeks out. So what I do is, and I do this with every client, um, the last week I take out the test, 
and I take out the GH. Oh, I'm sorry, and I and I added I added GH. I, I think I I think I injected the GH in the car as soon as I got it. By the way, I was, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. What is this? Is sub Q? Let's go right here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so um, yeah, I mean, right away. Um, so yeah, so the last week I always take out the test. Um, I take out the GH. I take out the test. The reason well, is because it does hold water. Well, let me ask. Let me go just for the test. Are we talking propionate? Because yeah. Yeah, because I mean, if you if you're if you're on an anthiate or cypionate a week out, you're still going to have a ton of it in your system by show day. Yeah. So here's the thing. So the funny thing is, I I I posted something the other day on my Instagram saying a napkin uh propionate for female bodybuilders, <laughs> you know, and I got a whole bunch of fucking response back and you know and all this and all that. So and I and I, I you know a lot of people. You, you, you've read my articles for muscle development when I wrote for you guys. You know, yeah. I, I write very technical. You know, I, I break stuff down. Um, but I don't talk that way because it confuses the hell out of people, right? Yeah. So if me and you had a conversation about, like, chemical structure and minerals and, and, and esters and stuff like that, yeah, we could have a conversation about that. To me, and, and if you, even, even if you look at, you know, on a medical site, so 100 milligrams of testosterone, is equal to 100 milligrams of an athlete, which is also equal to 100 milligrams of sipinate, right? Yeah, it's all the same. Test is test. Right. Yeah, test is test. So the thing about the thing about propionate is first in, it goes in faster because of the faster ester, first out, right? Yeah. So if you're taking 500 milligrams of propionate and 500 milligrams uh, or, or 500 milligrams of sipinate, it's the same shit, right? Yeah. Now they talk about minerals and stuff like that. It, the, the testosterone is it's a, the, the, the combination that the way the chemical structure of, it, of testosterone is, it's all the same thing as far as those esters. Mm-hmm. Now, when you talk about sustenon and you talk about suspension, it, it does change a little bit just because of, of the faster and slower in the sustenon and the suspension is water based. So that's, that's even faster and faster. Out. Yeah. Um, well, quick, quick question I about, te- I, I hate to keep interrupting you, but yeah. there are no. people who don't believe that tests should be part of a prep cycle. They'll just say, no, test is for the off season. Once you're in prep, it's trend, it's mass, it's prima ballon, it's master on. They don't think test has a place in contest prep. You know, why, why do you feel that it definitely does have a place? Well, it also depends on how big you are, right? So you could, you, if, you're, if you're a physique competitor or a classical physique competitor, you have really, you know, really good genetics. You know, um, yeah, I guess, you know, you could get away with I have a test, right? But Big Ronnie's not getting away without taking tests. <laughs> you know, Ronnie's not getting away with without taking tests. You right. know, and anybody else in that Olympia stage this year is not getting away without taking tests. We know that shit, you know. <laughs> so if you have certain genetics and you're in the MPC and you're in the 212, you know, and you can't and you can't take tests because you're going to gain too much weight, then yeah, of course, test, doesn't, test is not in your protocol, right? Yeah. But if you're competing against the big boys and you're competing in the open, mm-hmm. you know, test is test, yeah. you know? Um, so that, that, that's my, that's my answer to that. Uh, another thing is, you know, to, another, another, another part of that to answer your question is if you don't take tests, you know, what are you going to bump up? You're going to bump up your trend. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to bump up, you know, certain other things that have even more side effects mm-hmm. than the test does. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, what, 900 milligrams of trend has more side effects than 1,000 milligrams of test, right? Oh, definitely. Obviously. Yeah. You know, and it's also going to shut you down even worse because now, now, now you're fucking around with your, with, now you're lowering your testosterone levels, you're fucking around with your progesterone levels, you know, and then you're still going to develop estrogen, yeah. you know, from all that. So now, you know, now you have even more problems just using an increase in, you know, trend. Right. Um, if you don't use trend, you're not where you're gonna need your size from EQ, Primo, Masterone. You know, you have to increase that anyway. So, I mean, that's that's always that's always been a good question, by the way. Um, and I get that question all the time. Um, so yeah, so that's that's my prep cycle. So, I, I mean, as far as like taking away the test and the, and the GH is just because of the water, right? Um, but but let's say I have somebody who's pretty big, like I'll run Anadrol, which makes people turn into a water buffalo. I'll run Anadrol the last 30 days, all the way into the show. Hmm. You know, um, I mean, so something that's causing... I mean, yeah, I mean, Anadrol, obviously, water retention is an issue, but how long does it... If you stop taking Anadrol today, say you're even on a very high dose, say you're taking four a day, 200 milligrams a day, the water you're retaining, we're doing this on a... We're talking on a Wednesday. If I'm taking 200 milligrams today, when's that water going to be out of my system? Is it going to be out by if I'm competing Saturday? It should come out in about a week. Um, but 
the, the whole point of why does anadrol make you retain water? Because it turns into estrogen, mm. right? That's mm. the only reason why. Yeah. It's not because it's it's not a it's not a progesterone drug, it's not an estrogen drug. You know, it's 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 an anabolic DHT drug. So what makes it convert into what makes it you know it's a high it's a very high DHT drug. You know, um, it's it's more it's it's more androgenic than it is anabolic, right? I mean, it's probably uh, hundreds the highest count, hundreds androgenic, hundred anabolic. But if you really if you really look at it, if you really look at it, you know, we're talking about probably like five hundred androgenic for like you know androgen fifty, and you know, in, on a conscious basis. Um, but if you so if you're blocking, so if you're blocking uh if you're blocking estrogen, you know, through an arimidex, you know, remember you're taking you're taking a arimidex. I'm taking a arimidex. I'm taking a proviron. You know, yeah. so we're blocking DHT. We're blocking. I mean, we're blocking any type of estrogen retention. You know, and and that's the main thing. Like you know, you see a lot of contest prep coaches, and I've seen this. I've seen I've seen some top contest prep coaches having people take like two Remedex per day, mm. or one Remedex and one Letrozole a day. And I'm like, it doesn't fucking make sense. Like, like Letrozole, Remedex, and Aromasin all do the same thing. The different generation mm. drugs, anti-estrogen drugs, but they're suicidal what I call suicidal estrogen drugs mm -hmm. because they totally stop estrogen. Um, and I, you know, I've, I've, I've been very conscious and I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this because of my experience and I've always been very conscious with blood work. I've always understood how, how certain drugs um, affect hormones. So if, if, if I'm taking, you know, if I'm taking all these DHT compounds and my estrogen is 30, you know, with one, one pill of a Remedex, you know, my client's estrogen is on 30 or 40, you know, one pill of Remedex or Fumara or, or, or Romerson. Um, why take two? Why take three? Mm. You know, and that's, that's the issue. A lot, of, a lot of coaches don't understand that. Um, Novadex, man, throw Novadex out the fucking window, man. Novadex <laughs> is not an anti-estrogen. You know, that's wow. another problem, too. Like, you know, yeah, Novadex, it's not, it's, it blocks side effects, right? Yeah. So Novadex blocks the side effects of estrogen, but it doesn't stop estrogen from forming. And again, that's don't take it from me. Read, Google it. You know. But what about you know? There's there proviron blocks estrogen. Is it blocks estrogen? Correct. Doesn't masteron do that too? So yeah. So masteron and estrogen, so masteron and, and, and proviron are pretty much the same chemical structure. Um, masteron has a little bit more anabolic kick to it. Um, uh, proviron has a little bit more androgenic kick to it. You know, you have, you know, you have, you have, you have that table, right? That shows like whatever androgenic is, anabolic is. I guess we didn't, we didn't, we didn't really see it that way until, um, until the anabolic guides started coming out, right? Because, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, nobody made reports mm -hmm. about them and everything else. So mm -hmm. when Rain, you know, wrote those books, we started seeing, all right, this has this and this has that. Yeah. Um, and by the way, I, I think I read the first book like 10 times wow. <laughs> from, from front to cover, from front to all of the books like this thick. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean the old one was the old one was, but then you, you know what? It started getting even worse though because, you know, they started adding all these. Remember, cause remember the first one? The first one had like the back page was really cool. The back side was like had all the real steroids and pictures. what do you recommend it? Yeah. But yeah, pictures, right? Yeah. So then all, all, all then all these underground labs started coming out, and he couldn't even keep up with the pictures because it was fucking thousands. Of them. Impossible. Yeah. <laughs> That's Impossible. Possible. Yeah. So, um, you know, so a contest prep typically is 16 weeks. That's just an average for most people. Do the doses need to be increased as weeks go by and, and a person's calories go down and their cardio goes up to maintain the mass? Or could you write out the same doses for 16 weeks? Yeah, so sometimes, so sometimes they do change. Um, as far as like mass... I'm a firm believer, in, again, you know, we, we talked about it earlier about, I think everybody knows this, heavy duty, high intensity, you know, heavy weight, eight to 12 reps. So my, my whole thing is <clears throat> if, if you're burning fat, right, and you're maintaining muscle, your strength should not go down much. Hmm. If you're burning muscle, then that's when your strength starts going down. My strength has never gone down less than 20% from my wow. prep, from the beginning of the prep to the end of the prep. And if you speak to most of my clients, most of my clients, you know, they're going to tell you the same thing. Like our strength didn't go down. Um, that has to do with food. You know, it has to do with cardio. Um, you know, some people's metabolism is faster than others. Some people are slower. You know, some people need more cardio. Some people need less. You know, I myself didn't need that much cardio, you know, uh, to, to get in shape. 
I would do maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes, um, five times a week. But my rest of metabolic rate was like 2,800 calories. Hmm. You know, so I would burn 2,800 calories just sitting on the couch. You know, uh, yeah. yeah. So imagine, imagine me training hard for like an hour a day because you do burn more calories training than you do doing cardio, right? Minute for minute. You just cannot keep up the amount of, you just cannot keep up the amount of pace yeah. weight training than you do with cardio. So if you train your ass hard, you know, and then you go and do cardio, you're burning those calories. Um, the dosages, they might change, you know, uh, but they usually don't, sometimes they do, but they usually don't just because I set up the dosages according to their, their experience, how many shows they've done. And if I worked with a client a couple of times, like we pretty much know what we're doing. You know, we pretty much know what the dosages are. If it, Ron, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Yeah. You know, yeah. why fix it? You know, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. You know, as far as like peaking, peaking is different though. Cause every, like, if I was, if you were to prep me, right. And we did five shows, every peak we be different somehow, some way it'll be different. Even if it's a little bit, it'll be a different peak, hmm. you know, more water, less water, cut water, when start cutting water Wednesday and then cut water off on Friday. Don't cut water. You know, I never take out salt. So sodium stays in my diet straight through. Um, Water, I rarely, barely ever cut. Um, I also use aldactone towards the end of a prep. Um, sometimes 10 days out, sometimes seven days out. Now people are going to be like, oh my God, he's using diuretics. He's using diuretics. Well, I'm going to say, oh my days. God, why that, that seemed, because remember last year, there was this huge crunch. Was it last year with the women competitors? Yeah. And people were putting out Shelby's protocols and there was all this controversy because, yeah. you know, I think some women actually died over in Europe. But they're saying, yeah. Why is this? Why are these people taking aldactone or whatever at seven, ten days out from a show? And to me, that didn't make yeah. sense. And you just said it, so yeah. tell me why that yeah. why that does make sense. Okay, so aldactone, the chemical structure of aldactone, it's not to be a diuretic. Hmm. The chemical structure of aldactone is to block aldosterone. Hmm. So aldosterone is a hormone. So. If you really look at aldactone, it's not a diuretic. It's a hormone blocker because mm. it blocks aldosterone. Aldosterone is the hormone that makes you retain water and salt, mm. right? Yeah. So, for example, after the show, most people blow the fuck up. Why? It's not because they're putting out weight. You know, <laughs> I mean, you can eat, you can eat, you're not going to gain 30 pounds of eating in a couple of days. Right. The main factor why people put on that much weight is because the aldosterone levels go through the roof. They've been, they've been, they've been on a diet. They've been cutting water. Most coaches in the past, I guess people are starting to realize what works. We're cutting salt, cutting water, cutting salt, cutting food. Right. Yeah. And of course, after, you know, after prejudging, what do you get? You get a burger and fries. Burger and fries. So that's a, <laughs> burger and fries, right? And a diet soda and a diet soda. Yeah. Diet soda. <laughs> burger, but no cheese. Burger, but no cheese. Burger, but no cheese. Yeah. You know, so that starts the process. And then most people do fill up. And some people think they look better, you know, after the E. Or most people think they look better that Sunday after the show. Yeah. Um, but they don't realize what's on the backside, right? They don't realize they're, they're not looking at the water in their glutes. They're not looking at the water in their lower back. Their front might look fucking popping, you know, but, you know, oh, my God, fact, I look better. Well, yeah, take pictures of your back. You know, take pictures, you know, with a back double bicep. Right? No, you know, you don't, you don't look better. You know, they hold the water. I'm gonna, I just have to interject because I've been I was that guy, too. Like, oh, I wish I looked like this at the yeah. show. But when yeah, I look at the picture, yeah. you're looking in a mirror from three feet away and you're seeing veins popping yeah. out because now you're yeah. so full because you got all this sodium and water in you. But on stage, that would you'd look like a freaking water buffalo. You would you would have been looking yeah. way worse. So yeah, people yeah, were, de yeah. we're we're delusional. <laughs> oh, well, of course we are. we're crazy. We're insane. Bro. No, no bodybuilders, you know, and, and that's what's so cool. Like people start writing me shit sometimes, and I'm like. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm like, you're fucking crazy, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? But, I, and don't take this the wrong way, but we're all crazy what we're doing, right? I mean, we got to be crazy what we're doing. We love it. You know, this is, this, you know, it, again, you know, we know this is not safe, right? We know, like, this is not, if you want to be safe, you know, go and, like, work out. Don't take no drugs, you know. Go, go, you know, and, and live a healthy lifestyle. But, you know, if you want to do this, then, yeah, there's a safe way of doing it. And there's a fucking cycle way of doing it. And, you know, me and you have been around for a long time. And we've seen a bunch of cycles. No, yo, Ron, how many how many bodybuilders have you seen, right? Yeah. Because people send me pictures all the time. I'm sure people send you pictures all the time of all these fucking freaks all over the world. Oh my God, look at this guy. Yep. You know, and I'm like, yeah, that guy's not gonna last. 
you know, oh, I mean, that guy's not going to last. And, and I sort of keep track of them offhand, and, and a lot of them passed away these past few years. A lot of them died. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, people too. we know. Me I mean, I'm, I'm 53, and I'm, a lot of the guys that came up around my time, people I knew that were around my age, they're all dead by now. A lot of the guys that were really yeah. big and, you know, they, they never went off cycle, and they were just stayed big and heavy all the time. They all had heart attacks, kidney failure. Um, yeah. one thing I want to get into is fat burners because that's a whole other, you know, anabolics, they're one thing. Fat burners is a whole other category. So it's standard for pretty much everybody from bikini girls to super heavyweight bodybuilders to do clenbuterol, uh, the thyroid T3, T4, and there's other, I don't even know the weird DN, I don't, it's DNP, which to me is like the devil, but does everybody need a fat burner or there's some people that they're going to get in shape anyway and don't need that stuff? So when I first started working, when I saw, when I first started working with somebody, the first prep, I, I do add 25 uh, micrograms of T3. Um, so in butyrol, I'll, I'll add uh, pre, uh, pre uh, AM, AM cardio, pre AM cardio, or before the first meal, depending if you have time to do cardio, you know, you know, as soon as you get up, you know, we'll do that. So I, I, I like to add, you know, it's, it's funny because I know a whole, whole bunch of people are going to be with notes right now. Oh, shit, let me take all these notes. Yeah, you know? How much should I take? <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, when I wrote for Muscle Development, I actually put up a diet that I gave my clients. Like, I put up the exact fucking diet. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, like, you know, you could copy stuff and stuff like that. And, you know, you could, you know, you could take notes. And I, and I, and I, listen, I, I hope. I'm a very helpful person. I hope everybody's listening. I hope everybody understands, like, you know, what, what we've done, we've done, we've done for decades, right? So, you know, take notes, you know, and, and use some of the stuff. Don't, don't, over, don't overdo stuff. Like, you don't need three different type of estrogens. You don't need to do 2,000 milligrams of tests. You know, there's certain things you don't need. But, you know, we'll, I guess we'll get into that eventually. Yeah. Um, so as far as the fat burden, yes, I, I, I like starting with 25 micrograms of T3 early in the prep. At 12 weeks out, um, the the clan as well. Um, so what I do is I mix my clan with two two thousand milligrams of CLA, and uh, I used to do a thousand milligrams of L carnitine, but now we got the three thousand milligrams of L carnitine uh, liquid. So I've been using that, you know, the last couple of years. Um, so I'll mix those three things: clan, CLA, L carnitine in the morning before meal one or AM cardio. And then I, I add it in sometime, um, depending how many meals you have, if you have like seven meals, I'll do, I'll do the same thing before meal four. Um, if you do, if you have six meals, I'll do the same thing before meal three. Um, until we don't need it, right? So it comes to a point in time that, you know, your body fat is so low that you might not need it. So we'll pull it out, mm. you know, but if you need it, we'll keep it in there. Um, I used to go, I used to have a six week protocol on T3 um, that started at 25 micrograms and then it will go up and it will come back down, hmm. you know, and that, I mean, that worked phenomenally. Right. So we, we, you know, I mean, everything has worked because we change everything according to, you know, according, to, I mean, I change everything according to like what I see, you know, every, 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 every update is changed according to how the pictures look. Um, but I, I do use them. Um, does everybody use it? No, some people just don't hold body fat. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't take T3. And I would t I would take twenty five milligrams of T three and I'll lose like three or four pounds. I mean that, you know, that was that was my days. experience. To, it always made me lose muscle. Always. Yeah. 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 But, so what about Clint? Because Clint, Clint, Clint is notorious for the body gets accustomed to it after a certain amount of time. So would you cycle on like five days on, two days off, or did you have a set an amount of days on and off like that? So I'll do I'll do I'll do two weeks on, two weeks off. So I'll do uh, two weeks of Clint CLA and l carnitine and then two weeks to that and then i'll do two weeks of whatever fat burner is the best fat burner available at that time right because things change and there's, there's new like trademark products coming out and everything else it's not just caffeine and your invine and stuff like that anymore um so we, we i try to i try to look for the best fat burner i'll do that for two weeks clean two weeks and i'll do that for two weeks so we'll we'll do that um sometimes you know we'll i'll start adding that part the fat burning part the 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 T3 I started in in 12 weeks out, see if we can burn, see if, see if we get to a certain, certain point, and then I might pull that out. And then the, the fat burners I started adding in around 10 weeks. I rather I rather you guys be in shape um, early for a couple of reasons. The first thing is we're fucking psycho, right? So <laughs> we wanna we wanna look the way we look on stage 
five, you know, five months out. Five months you know, out. and I'm telling people, I'm like, listen, yeah, right. So I'm telling people, I'm like, listen, if you peaked today, seven weeks out, how the hell are we gonna keep that peak all the way to the day of the show? It's fucking impossible. Yeah. You know, I don't even care if you eat the same amount of food. It's just your body, it's impossible. Your body's not gonna survive on four percent body fat, four and a half percent body fat. Or even five, because some people could get away with five, five and a half percent body fat on stage, depending on where the body fat is, and still be shredded. Um, so yeah, I mean, so you gotta, you know, you have to. Everybody's different, man. Like everybody's psychologically different. You have to treat everybody different. Um, you can't treat everybody the same. You can't, you can't, you can't be robotic. You know, and that's that's very important. What about the ECA stuff? Ephedrine, caffeine. Where ECA? Ephedrine, caffeine. Oh, aspirin. Yeah. Do you still use? Do, do people still use that in prep? If you could find, if you could find ECA, if you could find the, the, the um, ephedra, mm. um, that would be the, my fat burner, right? So mm. it would be the clean two weeks and then the fat burner, um, e the ECA stack with the CLA and the carnitine. I know people, a lot of people have said over the years and they've, you know, they've, they've, you know, they've written their opinion on CLA and the carnitine, but are they proven fat burners? No, they're not, right? Mm. Does it work for me? Yes, it does. You know, so nobody, nobody has tested, you know, they've companies sell it and, and they have run, you know, they've run all these blind studies, you know, eight, six and a half people, you know, did well and 15 and three quarter people didn't do well, you know? So, mm -hmm. but from my experience, I do what works. I mean, if it works, it works. And that's just it. Okay. I've had the DNP argument with a ton of people and I, I usually only, <laughs> I usually only lose because I don't have the science I don't have the medical right. references to, to use on them. And, right. you know, so people will say it's fine. If you know what you're doing, if it's dosed properly, it's very effective. It's not dangerous if you quote unquote, do it right. So I'm gonna ask you unbiased. I'm not gonna ask you to agree with me or disagree with me. What is your opinion on DNP? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. So I had, I had the pleasure of, of talking to Dan Duchesne many times. Mm. Um, Dan was Dan was a very intelligent man. Um, I speak of Dan Duchesne. I speak of Mike Menzer the same way. I trained with Mike Menzer a couple of times, um, a couple of weeks at a time, you mm. know, in, in the 90s. Um, Dan, you know, they, they were both very interesting characters. Both very intelligent. Um, both, uh, you know, some people have their opinions about both of them. Um, and rightfully so, because people judge, people judge people according to what they say and how they feel, right? Yeah. Um, they don't look at what they do as far as like, well, this shit makes sense. That doesn't make sense. You know, so Dan, the way Dan described it, yeah, it, it, it sounded great. Um, I'll tell you from my experience how it works. Uh, and, and guys, I don't recommend DMP. I'm going to tell you this right now. I do not recommend DAP. Now, to be fair um, to Ron and, and to everybody who's watching, does DMP work? Fuck yeah. Mm. It works. Yeah. It burns. Like, it literally sh shreds off body fat. But that does not mean to take it. It has a lot of side effects. You know, one of the things in, in, in real DMP is fucking rat poison. You know, gunpowder. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of shit in there. Like, yeah, imagine, just, would you swallow rat poison no. if somebody told you it's going to burn body fat? Would you nope. swallow gunpowder if somebody told you, no, you're not. But since it's all in, all, in, all inclusive with the DMP, people are going to be like, oh, it's just DMP. Yeah. Um, my first experience with DMP, I took it, uh, I took, I started with 200 milligrams and I always got real stuff. I always got real, real stuff. Like I, I had, I had really good connections um, overseas. I had companies, Oregon, Oregon, Karachi, you know, I had, you know, a company I had, I always had real good connections. Um, my Mexico connections were really, really good, real Mexican companies. Um, even, even when I first started, you know, we, I, I still had connections, you know, from Watson, Anavars, you know, Brown, you know, Brown Pfizer tests. Um, sure. I mean, everything I had was good. And that's, that's what made me a good bodybuilder, right? Cause I had, a, I had all the good stuff. So my DMP came from a lab in, in Mexico, um, an official, it was an official, um, official pharmaceutical company that produced, you know, anabolic steroids, but they also produced DMP on the side, 
it's Mexico on the side, right? <laughs> um, so I started with 200 milligrams, took it for like a day. My, I felt hot, took my temperature. It was up to like, I took my temperature before it was regular, uh, 90.6, 98.5. You know, the first day I took 200 milligrams, the next morning I woke up at 100. Hmm. All right, I'm feeling hot, it's DMP, that's what it's supposed to be. I took my second DMP pill, you know, it went up to like 100.1. So now we're not talking about like point, I mean, 101. We're not talking about 0.1 or 0.2. Now we're talking about three degrees higher in two days. My third day, I was fucking burning, man. I was, I was, I was burning, I was burning so bad. You know, I had, I had, I was literally in, in, in my old place. I had, a, I had an air conditioner like right here and I would work right here. Right. That just happened. That just happens to be, and thank God it happens to be the setup when I was taking DMP. I had the air conditioner full blown. I was still sweating. I had a white shirt on. So my, my wife I walks in, she walks in, she goes, and Ron, I'm a very clean person. Like I, I take, I take minimum, minimum two showers per day. And, and for the most part, like, like now I have, like I have a whole bunch of shit time on my hand. I'll take three or four showers a day, depending oh. if I go outside, train. Or kind of like that. Yeah, I'm a very clean person. My, 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 I'm very, very clean. You know? So she walks into the apartment and she looks at me and she goes, she goes, did you shower today? I was like, what? Now we're talking about a good amount of space. We're not, you know, we're not talking about a small apartment. We're talking about a good amount of space. Yeah. She goes, did you shower today? I was like, what? She goes, I just, it smells really, it smells like ammonia in here. Uh-huh. You know, so as she got closer, she looked at my shirt. She was like, you have yellow stains all over your shirt. And I looked and there was yellow stains all over my shirt. So hmm. when people sweat, some people sweat yellow. Some people sweat lighter. Everybody, everybody's oil glands are different, right? Sweat glands. <laughs> You know, but that DP shit was pouring through my pores wow. because it was yellow, you know, and the ammonia, the ammonia smell was really bad. Um, I don't know anybody who's ever had a great, uh, great experience with DMP. Mm. You know, um, the best experience, the greatest experience they could say is that it got me shredded, you know, and that's going to be everybody. It's going to get everybody shredded. You know, but the shit that, that if you really think about it, the stuff coming out of your pores, the ammonia smell, your temperature rising, your heart could stop, man. You that's know, a, if you get up to one or three, you want to four. But the thing is, so you, we have all these other options. We have clenbuterol. We have thyroid meds. Yes, yes. We have ECA. I, I just think it's a shortcut. A lot of people, do they want, I, I'm not going to put through this guy. I know a coach. I've heard of a coach that gives his clients DNP just so that they can have two cheat meals every week in prep and they can still keep getting in shape because they got to have their pizza. They got to have their burger and fries or whatever, you know, because it, can I say it? They're pussies. If, if you don't have the discipline to yeah. stay on a contest <laughs> diet, you know, they want the glory of being on stage and winning, but they don't want to suffer for it. They still want to eat all the shit. They don't want to do cardio. And a lot of people are going to slam me in the comments. But yeah, I, I just think it's like a lazy person's way out. Oh. And I don't even know how people function on it because I had a training partner who was using it. He stopped after a couple of weeks because we he texts me at like, I'd be waiting at the gym. I'm like, where, the, where, the, where is this guy? He's like, bro, I can't even get out of bed. I feel like shit. Oh. I said, and after like a week or so, a week of that, after he canceled on me like three times, I said, maybe you need to stop this DNP. If you can't even train, how are you going to get to the show and look good if you can't even lift weights now? So. <laughs> yeah, that was another thing. So I, I, I did it. I did it for I did it for seven straight days. I and yeah, it was tough to train. I mean, I I didn't have a choice. I, I tr- I'm the type. Of, I'm like you, man. I'm I'm a hardcore. I'm old school. Mm. So if I'm crossing the street to the gym and a, and a, and a Mack truck hits me, I'm getting up and I'm going to the gym. That's just the way it is, you know. And 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 I'm I'm crazy because you know. And I and I and I, and I tell people this all the time. I'm like, shit, my fucking shoulder hurts, man. I'm like. I think I got to do shoulders tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. man, my legs hurt for some reason. I don't know what it is. Like, but I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna squat tomorrow. That's gonna heal it up. You know. So me working out heals up my my. <laughs> don't try this at home. <laughs> like, yeah. You know. But that's just my mentality. But it's tough. It's tough to train on that stuff, man. It yeah. really, really is. Um, so just to answer your point, no, it's not worth it. How about cardio? I mean, how about like dieting? How about like how about you do these two things first yeah. before you do DMP? Yeah. You know. How about that? You know, also DMP burns muscle too. It's not just fat. I mean, your 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 body temperature is going up, right? You're burning a shitload of calories, so you're also going to burn muscle. And people don't think of it that way. They just well, we're burning fat. 
bro, if you're, if you're, if you're losing 10, 15 pounds in seven to 10 days, you're burning muscle. You know? You know, th these myths get out there. I, I hear people say every pro is on DNP. Every pro. I'm like, not every pro. No. They're like, every pro does this or that. I'm like, you know, every pro personally, because they'll hear from someone that's an insider. They say, well, I know all the pros. And first of all, nobody knows all the pros. I'm sorry. I don't care who you are. I know a lot of pros. I don't know all the pros. And that's, that's how they'll justify doing because it, it's, this is what everybody does and I'm going to do it too. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, it goes, it goes, it goes back to the water thing, right? <laughs> it goes back to the water thing, right? Yeah. So they have to be taking this water, right? Because if they're not taking this water, how the fuck are they getting that big? How the fuck are they going to get that rip? Why are they doing it? This yeah. is, this is a secret. We all do this. Why, why not me? Why, why can't it be me? Yeah. Well, I'm sure God blessed you with something to do, right? I'm sure God blessed you with something. You had some type of ability that God blessed you with. You know, some people are blessed with, with, with fucking great genetics. You know, some people I look at, and I, as soon as I look at them, I'm like, yo, that person's going to turn pro. You know, so as far as, I, I've, I've told seven people my whole life they're going to turn pro. Seven. My whole entire life. And I've been doing this 33 years. Um, I've prepped thousands and thousands, and I've prepped we we'll probably have like five thousand people on the boats. Wow. I give you the exact number, but we haven't. Yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't counted, but I had, I had over four thousand people about three years ago. Okay. So I've had over five thousand clients. Wow. Um, never. I've probably used the. You know, I have. I, I'm not gonna lie. I probably used DMP. Uh, well, no. I mean, I'll give you a number right now, stop on my head, because I know exactly who used it. One, two, three. I've used DMP six times with hmm. my clients. Wow. And the only reason why I use DMP with six times is that they were so adamant, mm. adamant about using it. I've used this in the past, it's worked, trust me. And you know, Ron, you always get the same thing. I know my body, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I know what works. I mean, that, that has to be a challenge for you as a prep coach because you're telling someone to do X, Y, Z, but you don't know if behind your back, they're gonna say, well, he yeah. told me 500 milligrams, but I think I'm gonna do 800. Yeah. He told me to take two of these a day. I'm going to take five a day just to make sure, you know, it's, it's more is better. That's how we, that's, that, that's the meathead mentality that we're unfortunately all wrapped up in. So let, I try, I, I try to develop, I'm sorry. I, I try to develop a really close relationship with, with my clients. Um, as far I keep it real, man. Like you've known me for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, the way I talk, the way I talk to my clients is the way I, like I talk like this, you know, I'm not, I don't sugarcoat stuff. Like I'm, I, and I tell people like I was on the phone with, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a, uh, I'm gonna announce him this week. He, he's a he's a pro body, but I worked with him in the past. Um, so we're gonna get back together. And I was telling him, I'm like, yo, you fucking up, man. I'm like, you're gonna kill yourself. Like, what are you doing? Like, mm -hmm. you don't need to do all that shit, you know. Um, and that's just what I do. And I tell people the honest truth. They're like, well, you know, or or they'll send me something. What do you think about this protocol? I'm like, is that person still alive? <laughs> you know, Bro, I, I, yeah, I've I've worked with top. I've worked with a Hall of Fame bodybuilders. I've worked, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'll say the names, you know, I've worked with Dennis James. I worked with Tony Freeman. And I'm going to tell you guys something right now, okay? I work with both of those guys. And those guys, amongst other, but those, those guys specifically. Dennis James was one of the biggest bodybuilders there was, right? Oh, he man. was Mr. Olympia before he got on stage, right? His pictures were fucking amazing all the time. Yeah. Big fucking guy. Tony Freeman, another big fucking guy, right? 6'5", 270, 280 pounds. And I'm going to tell you this. And I'm going to tell you guys this, and I want you guys to understand this. The two protocols that I sent to these guys, the first protocol I sent each of these guys, they wrote me back. Fact. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Call me. I'm looking at my phone. I'm like, what do you mean what is this? Call them up. Sub, up? sub up, D. Sub Tony. Fact. I've never taken this. Fact. I don't even know. I don't know what this is. Fact. Well, that's too much. Fact. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm not. And I'm not even sending them like two thousand milligrams of tests. Hmm. I'm sending them like fifteen hundred milligrams of tests. Fifteen hundred milligrams of tests to these dudes who've been around for a long fucking time. Hmm. You know, and they're like, I, I don't go over a thousand. Yeah. You know, what's halos? I've never taken halos. You know, so whenever anybody says, whenever anybody says that pros take a whole bunch of shit, I'm sure that they are. And I'm sure there's amateurs. And I'm sure a lot of people that mean you, you know, have died yeah. because of taking too much shit. 
You know, so no, no, the answer is no. The answer is genetics, man. Again, it goes back to my Jordans, right? I can't play like Michael Jordan. I can't dunk like Michael Jordan. I used to, I used to be able to dunk the Nerf ball, though, even though I'm five five. <laughs> Nerf ball. You know, when I was younger. That, that, no. that, that's, that's a pretty good vertical. I'm funny, like a 46, 47 vertical when I was I, young. I can dunk on yeah. one of those ones that's like this high off the ground. And the eight foot rims, the eight foot rims. <laughs> I need like a two foot rim. But uh, yeah, so that, that's the, I guess that's the last thing I want to get into is I feel like there's a lot of overlap, a lot of redundancy when people prep. They take a lot of things that are sort of similar. Uh, you'll see people taking like five different orals. They'll be taking Anavar, Winstrol, uh, you know, all, they'll be taking Tran, Masteron, Primo, Equipoid. They're, they're throwing in like every possible thing when I, I'm almost certain a lot of it's just overlap. It's the same shit over and over again. So how do you go designing a, a contest prep cycle that's more efficient, more productive, and it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt somebody. It's not gonna take them to the poorhouse because people are blowing their freaking life savings on a prep cycle to win, you know, the local Mister B- my backyard. <laughs> I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best bodybuilder on my block. <laughs> I think I would say I am. I think I still am to this point. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. So a great example of that is like Becca and Trent, right? Mm-hmm. So. DECA and Trent are two drugs that you do not take at the same time, right? Or DECA and, 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 or, and DECA and EQ, right? So um, more, 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 more. So DECA, DECA is a drug that I do not add in with EQ and Trent. I think that, let me say that better. So DECA is a drug I don't add in to EQ and Trent um, because with, with one another, because um, they're very high, they're, they're anabolic. Um, they're androgenic, but they also cause a lot of progesterone, right? Mm. Um, of course, there's stuff to take block progesterone, Desinex, and stuff like that. Um, but we don't, I don't, I don't, I ha- I've not seen great results from, um, from, from using DECA with those other, um, other two compounds. Okay. So let's go back to the cycle. Test is test. Test is the king. You know, um, test, test EQ and trend. It, it, it's a good, it's a good start. Um, they do different things. Yes. Listen, everything is going to get you bigger, right? Mm-hmm. Everything's anabolic. Everything's going to get you bigger. 10 milligrams of, of, of Anavar is going to put on size. You might never see it because it's very little, but it's going to add size because that's mm-hmm. what Anavar does, right? 10 milligrams. Yeah. So I think that's okay. Um, as far as the pills, Proviron is used, Proviron is pure DHT, right? So it's used to, to, to really get you harder. Um, Winstrol also gets you harder, um, but it also has an anabolic kick to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anavar, Anavar is very similar to me um, as to Oratoranabol. Um, I love both of them. Those are my two favorite drugs, Anavar and Oratoranabol. They're very similar. Um, they don't convert to estrogen much. They, some people they don't convert at all. They, they very small amount, but they do convert. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't add Anavar and Oratoranabol together. Um, Winstrol, I would add in there, Winstrol, Oratoranabol, and a Proviron. Um, again, we went back to talking about Proviron and Masterone, very similar. Masterone has more of a, has more, has more of a kick to it. Um, the reason, the way I put the cycles together is because, you know, we're, we're, we're gearing up for one show, right? We're gearing up for, for that one day, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it could be two, it could be a two-day show, but we just gear enough for that one day. So there's different things that we need to do to get to, to that point. Um, let's say, okay, so hollow testing, right? Hollow testing is, is, is fucking, hollow testing is pure, pure, pure DHT. Like we said, providing is too as well. So, but the provider we're putting in there, but the last 30 days, 45 days, that's what we're putting in the hollow testing because that really gets you hard and grainy. Um, it also helps you train harder. Um, it gives you, it gives you, you know, it gets you angry. I guess some people. I've never had word rage. I don't understand what word rage is. I mean, why the fuck are you mad if you're big? You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're big, you should be happy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're you're so so. Ron, well, how, have you ever gotten so big that you're scared to do anything to anybody? Like, you're scared because you know you're gonna hurt them, right? Personally, you know? no. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know, yeah. so I, yeah. you got to be careful, man. But I, I never had word rage. I don't understand word rage. I've always been happy with what I've done. Um, so hollow test and I put in um, because it gives you the extra kick to training. So I'm sorry, do you, do you keep the you know, do you keep the provirin in with the halo or do you take the provirin yeah. out? 
No, so I'll, I'll keep it in there, and then I'll keep the I'll keep the 50 milligrams of pyrrhine in there with the halo, and I'll run that all the way to the end. So my orals never come out, right? Okay. So my tests, my shots come out a week out. Um, so the shots would be going all the way back to the beginning of the prep. It would be tests, EQ, and, and trend. Trend I wouldn't run for the whole 16 weeks. Trend I, I, trend I don't even run for the 12 weeks. I, 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 did, I, I trend in at week eight, um, 10 to eight. So then I'll take that out. The reason I'm taking, I'm taking out the shots for two reasons. One, of course, is you don't want a bad shot. We've seen people on the Olympia stage with fucking bumps, bruises, and shit like that. Yeah, you know, we don't want that. It actually happened to me at a show once, and uh, it was from, it, it was from Winstrow. And um, I, I'm not going to tell you what show, because people will be like, I do it, just tricep will fuck up. But I, 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 there was one shot that I hit, and my tricep looked like it was like 23 inches, you know? Yes, um, so the shots I try to take out, um, your glutes, do not inject your glutes. Mm -hmm. Do not inject your glutes. The reason why you shouldn't inject your glutes is you need shredded glutes on stage. If you're constantly injecting your glutes, you're going to cause scar tissue. So a lot of you guys have a whole shitload of scar tissue on there. Well, why are my glutes striated? Why do not the side of my glutes striated? You know why? Because that upper right-hand corner where you're hitting your glute, right? That little box, the upper right-hand corner where yeah. you should be hitting your glutes, that's causing scar tissue all the way down. It's also causing inflammation. So I've, I've, never, I've never injected my glutes. When I, was, when, I was, when I was bodybuilding to do shows, I never injected my glutes. It was always my shoulders, um, triceps, shoulders, triceps, and, and, and my biceps. So why, but know, why wouldn't um, those areas also get, you know, massive accumulation of scar tissue and inflammation? They will, right? But they, 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 will be, they will be bigger, you know, but you will still see some type of striation. I mean, it, it's easier to get striations on your upper body than it is on your lower body. As we know, a lot of people don't have glutes. Right. So that's that's where people look at like, when people turn around to the back like oh shit like he has glutes you know from the front if you hit you know if you hit the most muscular if you hit the front double you know everything's gonna start popping up everywhere everything's gonna go down all over the place yeah. but the scar tissue on, on on the glutes is the biggest problem it's a huge problem for a lot of bodybuilders um, my favorite place well, since you since you spoke about the, the, the you know sh up, shooting up here my favorite place is my rear delt mm -hmm. so you have if, when you extend your arm over here. You know, over in the back, you have a, a muscle that pops out. That is actually your rear delt muscle. Mm. It's very easy to hit. Um, if you're too big, it's kind of hard to hit. You know, I've had I've had my, my, my wife hit it, my friends hit it. Ugh, can't um, reach. It goes right in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't do it. Oh, I can do it for me, though. This, I, I can't even do it right now, and I'm not even that big, you know? I can't. I've never um, been able to do it. But, yeah, I mean, that's my favorite place to hit, you know? Mm -hmm. And then quads, I never hit quads when I was, when I was bodybuilding. I did it once with, with Winstrow, and I was so fucking hard-headed. Two days later, I did it again with Winstrow, water-based Winstrow, and then for like a week, I couldn't walk. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, I mean, yeah. you got to be careful with your stuff, too, man. Very important. Yeah. I did. T Remember T400? Yeah, yeah! yeah. <laughs> I, I, put, uh, I put that in my quad one time. My whole... I got cellulitis. Did, had to get on uh, Cipro or something. Man, it was a bad, bad, bad scene. So yeah, I tell people <laughs> leave, leave leave your quads alone, guys. Man, uh, we, well, we remember T T. So T four hundred had some propionate in there too. You know, I propionate I, I, hurts I like shit. I just remember it. I think it was all the benzyl alcohol because to to put that much of a steroid yes, into yes. one ml of oil, they have to dump so much benzyl alcohol to, as a solvent, yes. and it's incredibly the post injection pain is the worst. Yeah, and I had to help somebody yeah, so move the, the, too. So the B eight. Yeah, so the, the BA oil, the BA oil ratio is off, you know, because you're, you're putting that much ester in, in, into, into a base, of course. Yeah, so um, man, we should wrap it up because this is just episode one. We want to have more episodes. So guys, in the comments below, we want some feedback. I'd like to hear from you guys. What, what do you want to hear fact talk about in upcoming shows? If you have some questions, maybe we'll do a QA. and a You know, we're open, we're open to suggestion. This is our very first pilot episode. Yeah, awesome. Great, great stuff. I'm so, so grateful to you, Fact, for, uh, for contacting me. And man, I'm grateful for you, Ron. Thank you, man. Yeah. And, yeah, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, thank you for, I, I, I reached out to Ron, guys, and I said, listen, <laughs> I, I, I want back an MD, right? Like, I started with MD, you know, I, I want back an MD. Like, I want to, you know, I, I want to, I'm not going to say help the publication because the publication is MD. That's, that's a brand in itself. Yeah. But I would love to be part of the publication. And, and Ron said, you know, yeah, that's, that's a great idea. And, and Ron, thank you very much. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I, I, I'm an open book. You know Ron is open book because you know Ron <laughs> talks about everything, but I'm an open book as well. So yeah. anything you guys want to talk about, please, man, let's do it, man. And let's do it right. Let's, let's do bodybuilding the right fucking way. And are you still available for coaching? Or are you full up with clients? No, no. So I started, so I got back to, so I put, I made an announcement like a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, I'm back to full-time coaching. Um, I think we spoke before we started airing about, you know, I had taken some time off. I really didn't. Um, I, I, I capped my coaching because I wanted to do a couple of things. I wanted to sell my businesses, which I did. Um, I have, I have investments, you know, that, that I keep, but they're not, they're not businesses that I need to run with, 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 uh, with, with you know, with employees, inventory and stuff like that. Yeah. So I have a lot of time, man. Like I have a lot of time and, and, and again, like what is there to do with time? Like, you know, I'm, I'm older, like I'm not, I don't go party. I don't go to freaking <laughs> live KOD and stuff like that. I don't go out dancing, you know, so I wake up early. I train early, man. Let's get some conscious prep going. Let's win some more pro pro cards. I want 200 pro cards, man. So I need 85 more. Let's get it done. <laughs> oh, dude. Well, I'll be contacting when I'm 70 years old. That's when I'm making my comeback. The over 70 division. Yeah. It's a couple of years away. Me and you, bro. It'll be first, first and second place. <laughs> so uh, can we give your email out? Is that okay? Yes. Okay, yes. So, so my email is Coach Fact Prep. Coach, Co fact prep. Coach fact prep at, at gmail.com. Okay, we'll put that so in the link. Coach fact prep at gmail.com. We'll put that in the link yeah, to uh, the, awesome. uh, the description. Uh -huh. Cool. Well, man, uh, this has been yeah, this has been enlightening. Then, We've went over a wide range of contest prep cycle topics in one in one show. So, man, let the games begin, man. We're we're rock and rolling with this. I'm excited. So, thank you, Ron. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you very much, man. All right, guys. So you've been watching Fact Attack with Fakri Mubarak, and we're. Uh, we're only one episode in, but we're gonna we're gonna make this thing special. It's 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 gonna be a good one. So appreciate you guys watching. Subscribe to the channel, smash that bell for notifications, do all that good stuff. And again, give us some feedback in here. I want to hear what you guys think and what you what you'd like to talk about in upcoming episodes for sure. So yeah, in fact, that's it, man. Thank you so much. And uh we'll talk again. Thank you very much. Soon. All right, everyone, thanks for yes, watching. Thank you, sir. See you next time.